Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm glad you all made it. I know it's the last session on a Wednesday. Uh, after what's been a pretty busy week, so kind of impressed to see this many people here. Uh, wasn't actually expecting that many people, so good job. Um, so my name is Andy. I'm an engineer on the Rackspace Private Cloud Engineering and Development Team. Um, and along with my colleague Jesse, who's currently sitting, um, we're going to talk to you about logging um, and how you can manage it in your OpenStack environment. Um, the way that the architecture has changed for kind of cloud and cloud applications and infrastructure as well uh, means that the way we were doing things before with logging uh, doesn't work now. And uh, we've needed to address that, uh, the issues that have arisen from that, like uh, very recently for our team. And so uh, we've literally just gone on this path in the last six months or so. And so we, we've learned quite a bit, and, and we'd like to share that with you. Um, so I work on a, a pretty big team of uh, really good guy, uh, guys. And like we're uh, all developers at the moment, uh, working on the OpenStack Ansible deployment project primarily. Um, but what it does mean is that if I say anything that's completely wrong or a bit weird, the shepherd cricks are probably going to come out, and the talk might end a little bit early. So hopefully that doesn't happen, and I stay on stage the whole time, and then uh, everyone can be happy. So why should we care about logging at all? Um, logging is kind of the ugly cousin of monitoring and metrics. Um, you don't need, know you need them until you really need them. What we get a lot of the time is product comes to us asking for metrics and things that they can measure. Things like monitoring and metrics are very tangible. So when stuff's down, a customer wants to know that something's down, and that's where monitoring comes in. And what the product wants to show customers are graphs and pretty pictures that customers can look at and go, wow, this is awesome. And those are the, uh, those are the metrics. But customers don't really care about logging in the sense that they never look at it and why should I care? Like, it's just a bunch of lines of like meaningless text to me. And that's a problem for us, because developers also don't care about logs in the same way as, as support and operations do. Um, developers tend to care more about like stack traces. Is my application running? Is the, are things working? Is it you know, being deployed properly? Um, but supports and operations need the logs at critical moments when things are not going well. And at that point, it's too late to say, oh, well, you know what? Our logging solution is kind of bad. Um, you know, your site's done, give me a couple of weeks and I'll fix the logging and then maybe we'll get back to you. Um, so logs aren't just for support people. Um, other people should care regardless. Um, a couple other use cases, like auditors need logs, like anyone in compliance needs to store the logs. Um, you know, you can use them for, aside from troubleshoot, you can use them for trending, um, access correlation. Um, there's a whole bunch of other use cases that like, I'm not even gonna go into really. Oh, I've gone. Way too many. Back. Sorry about that. Um, oh, there we go. OK. So, um, so yeah, like a lot of the use cases we get are like, hey, show us metrics, show us uh, monitoring. But you, you kind of need the logs. And the, the trick is also that even auditors who need the logs and need to store them, they don't actually care what the logs say. They just care that, hey, I've got logs and they're stored. Like, are these logs being stored? I don't really care what they say. But as a customer, when your site's down, and you're on the line with a support guy who can't fix your stuff because your logging is bad, you're going to care about the logs. You just didn't know you cared about the logs. And as a, as a customer representative for a company, you're going to care about the logs when your customer calls you up and says, hey, our support, like your support sucked. Like you couldn't fix this thing. Like we were down for five hours. What's the deal? Um, and almost all of that boils down to logs. So we all have logs on our servers anyway. So what's the big deal? Like why do we care about how they're managed? Um, and that's great. So if we look at the old day solutions of like we have one server with a web server, an application, and a database, and they're all on the same server, and we've got one system administrator, and the system administrator logs onto the server, and we've got a site down issue, and he looks in the Apache logs, and he looks in the database logs, and maybe there's an application log, and we'll say a system log as well. So he's got four logs to look in, but that's, you know, that's pretty doable. I can look in those four logs. It'll maybe take me 15 minutes, find out what the problem is, I fix the problem. Everyone's happy. What if we had two servers now? And what if we separate our app and, and our web servers out into separate servers? So now we've got four servers, one running, two running application, a web server, and maybe a, a database server. And each of them have system logs. Now we've got eight logs across four servers. And now it's going to take me a lot longer than 15 minutes to log into all these servers, look at all the logs, and find out what the issue is. 
now we move that forward to, to what we're looking at now, which is that the explosion of kind of containers and microservices has meant that your logs are all over the place. Um, they're on cloud instances and applications uh, for infrastructure. They're often inside containers. They're everywhere, and some of these things don't last long. So I can spin up a cloud server and spin it down, and then the logs are gone. And then how do I troubleshoot that? And then on top of that, the sheer volume of logs, like I've got 100 logs on 100 different containers, and I need to look inside all of them to find the problem. But this just doesn't scale. And it's, it's a pretty common problem for like most things in, in IT and cloud, is that you can't look at the problems that you have now and solve them the way you were, but just more of that. And so you need to get smarter, and you need to get more efficient. So it, it's kind of like in the olden days before cars and bikes and planes. You could walk around your town because the, in order to get food and water, it was only a kilometer away. But as soon as you needed something outside of your town, you might need to get a bike because it's maybe 20 kilometers away, and walking's not adequate for that. But then if it's 100 kilometers, I now need a car. And if it's thousands of kilometers, I need a plane. And that's kind of the way that IT and pretty much everything else is, is evolving. Like, as soon as things start to scale exponentially, we just can't keep doing the same solutions. And this is kind of how the era of the log grepper began. I don't, know if, I don't know if Siri's doing my presentation for me, but uh, that actually would be useful. So if Siri's in the audience, like, feel free to come up. Um, so I don't know if, if there are any uh, John Oliver fans who watch uh, Last Week Tonight, um, but he's got a segment that's called How Is This Still a Thing? Um, and so tonight I kind of want to ask the log grepper, how is this still a thing? So I don't know if you are aware, but there are people in organizations all across the world uh, whose job it is literally to sit there and grep logs. And it's normally for like cloud infrastructure, and we've got massive public clouds in various companies, and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to grep logs all day. Um, and it's also normally the junior guy. Like, you can be the log grepper. Enjoy that. <laughs> like, Jesse's actually our log guy. So he's going to do the demo later. <laughs> so uh, you can look forward to like first hand experience from a log grepper. Uh, <laughs> So for those of you that don't know, grep is a Linux command line tool. Um, that's, it's a pattern searcher. Um, so it's commonly used to search logs and other files. Um, I don't want to give the impression that it's not useful at all as a tool. I mean, it completely is. I use it on a daily basis. I think pretty much any uh, developer or systems administrator does. But as a tool to search through thousands of lines of logs at a time, it's, it's not adequate. It's, it's simply not. Um, I really don't think this should be a job in, in the modern cloud era. And I think that the time for grepping through logs um, needs to go back to you know, seven years ago when I had a, a one server infrastructure or a two server infrastructure and, and things weren't distributed properly. It was, it was just a, I have a load balancer and a couple servers behind it, and we're all happy. Now, I'm pretty sure they don't recognize this on their LinkedIn profile or their CV, but uh, you know, look out for some key terms, and I'm sure you'll spot them. In fact, anything that says junior cloud something is probably the log gripper. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine put it like this. It's like a pigeon looking for a solitary seed um, in a pile of wood chips. And as the infrastructure scales, you could say it's like a pigeon looking for a seed in one of several hundred piles of wood chips. The end result is that you get disengaged, unhappy employees who don't like the jobs they're doing and look to go elsewhere. Um, so recruiters, if you find a junior cloud person, you should probably ask them if they want a job. They almost certainly do. We have to get more efficient. We have to keep these people engaged. There's like smart people doing stupid jobs, and we need to stop that. So a little bit of an ad break. I'm going to do a bit of a plug. So apologies in advance. But it does relate back to the log talk, so I'll... Uh, dovetail it back in. Um, one of the projects that we work mainly on is the OpenStack Ansible deployment project. Uh, my colleague Kevin did a talk yesterday. I'm not sure if, if any of you were at it. It was in this room, actually. Um, and I just wanted to, to give a quick plug to it, because uh, as someone who works pretty extensively on it, it's, it's something that I'm pretty proud of. I think the work that, that has gone into it is, is, is really great, and it works a lot better than any of the other deployment tools that I've used, at least. Um, as with a lot of great things, it started off 
with Rackspace, but we've now made it into a community project. Um, so I'm a little bit biased, but definitely check it out. Um, we're on IRC on, on Hash OpenStack Ansible, um, and it's up on StackForge on GitHub. Um, so if you're interested in deploying uh, cloud or, or want to play around with like a, a container architecture for deploying OpenStack, then uh, definitely take a look. And the reason it's kind of important to the log talk is mostly because the change in architecture that we, we took was from everything deployed on Metal to all the OpenStack services deployed in containers, um, with the exception of compute and Swift storage. Um, they're all in installed on containers. And that's important because the logs for everything are now distributed across probably 40 containers for an install um, and, are, and are still in, in different locations. So if you take Nova as an example, you've got a Nova scheduler container, you've got a Nova uh, API container, um, you've got a Nova metadata container. And that means I've got three places to look in for Nova logs. Um, you know, I mean, that's not even including like the scheduler and all sorts of other services for Nova. So it, it just scales and makes the log problem um, much bigger and, and makes a solution for that problem a lot more important. And that's actually the reason that uh, we've now addressed this and that we're giving this talk is because before when we had all the services on physical boxes, it wasn't smart and it wasn't good, but the problem wasn't big enough for us to address it. And this moved it, it just, it just made it so much bigger that we couldn't ignore it anymore. So one of the problems I've been talking about is that uh, the logs are distributed across many containers in, in many, many places. Um, so a pretty simple solution would just be to create a centralized log server. And that's actually one of the things we have done. Uh, we have a centralized RSS log server. But if we take a, a centralized RSS log server as the example, it's great, right? We have all, this, we have all the logs in one place, and you know, the, we can now search them in one place instead of having to log into, into other servers. But Aside from skipping the step where we log into a whole bunch of servers, what problem does it actually solve? Like, we still have the issue that we've got, you know, thousands of individual logs, they're just in one place. Um, and, like, what if that server were to die? Like, if we've got one server and it dies, we just lost all our logs. I mean, that's way worse than any problem we had before, actually. Um, and can we scale it? Like, if I've got this many logs coming through to one server, that server's probably gonna like fall over under the weight of all the logs that are pushing through it. Uh, it could crash our entire infrastructure, really. And then like backing up the logs, like how do I ensure that they're not gonna just disappear? Um, so we, we solved that which is with a pretty common uh, application that pretty much everyone is using who's doing uh, log management for OpenStack and, well, any large application, really, um, by using Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is kind of like a database where we can send the logs and they're then searchable and they're indexed and we can search via tags and uh, fields on the logs that we've sent through um, and you can use com uh, command line utils or there's a GUI called Kibana which you can use to, to search it. The, one of the benefits of Kibana is it also gives the, the pretty graphs and the pretty pictures that product are after um, and it's also useful in terms of just showing the, the kind of uh, logs that you have and, and correlating logs. Um, Elasticsearch can also be clustered, um, so that kind of handles the performance and resilience issues. And you can also do some cool things with archiving. Um, for example, you can archive off to an existing Swift cluster, for example, or another object store. So why is Elasticsearch not enough? Um, so we've got all the logs in one place now, and it's not in separate log files. They're all actually in the same searchable place. Um, so everyone's happy. Well it's not quite the end of the problem. So when you put a whole bunch of logs from different locations in one place, what you're really doing is comparing oranges to apples to beach balls. They're all round, and, but they don't all fit in the exact same way. They have different characteristics and different use cases, um, but really I can't search them. To be more concrete in terms of what you do in OpenStack, the application logs, the database logs, the system logs, they're all in different formats. In fact, the OpenStack uh, logs themselves, I think, have around four to five different log formats. So just in OpenStack itself, we're talking of like four to five different things that don't match up if I were to just throw them all in Elasticsearch. Uh, this leads to loads and loads of entries in Elasticsearch, but they're not searchable. So really, what, all we've done is create a more jumbled view of hundreds and hundreds of logs that isn't really useful to anyone, because now I can't even really see where they're from or what, what the message is or anything really. It's actually counterproductive. And 
like for that reason, you, you need to have a system um, where containing all the logs just isn't enough. So how do we make the logs searchable? How do we put this together? Um, so one of the things that you have to do is you have to tag and format all the logs and filter out the logs that you don't care about. So a lot of logs at the moment in OpenStack are not set to the right priority. So there was actually an ops meetup uh, yesterday for logs, um, which was incredibly useful. Um, but one of the takeaways from that is that most people who are doing logging um, from an ops perspective are doing all their logs on debug mode. Um, now that sounds really dumb, because if anyone's looked at debug mode, the logs that you get out are ridiculously verbose. Um, there's a ton that no one really cares about. But the problem is that there's some logs that people do care about that only come out in debug mode. And so what ends up happening is I ignore all the logs I don't care about, and I have to filter through tons um, to, to get the ones that I actually do care about. But the point is you can filter, you can format logs, and, and you can tag logs. And for this, we use uh, Logstash, which is also really common. I think most people are using Logstash to, to do the kind of log filtering, formatting, and tagging. Um, and, and yeah, you can basically like tag and, and format logs so that all the logs are of the same uh, type. So if I take a log from Apache or I take a log from like the Nova console, for example, I, have, uh, I, I set them out so that the time field is the same. So now I can search on time field. Or the, the source IP or something like that is, is the same. So a couple of the things that we've learned. Um, so as I mentioned, we, we originally started um, looking at changing the way we do the logging. Um, because of the change to our architecture. Um, so we like to do as much as we can uh, open source. So the whole OpenStack Ansible deployment project is, is open source. And even the add-on stuff, um, like the logging, which isn't technically in the project, um, is open source. It's, it's available on our Rackspace uh, RCB ops. It's on GitHub. Um, so there's a repository called RPC Extras, um, which has all these kind of things and a couple other tools that we use specifically for Rackspace. We move them out of OS Ansible deployment because it's, uh, they're like Rackspace specific things. And we think that our opinionated version of what you should do should be separate. And we want the OS Ansible deployment project to just be community driven, specific to OpenStack. Um, but one of the things we wanted to do originally was look at what other people had done with this and use it or fix it or make it better or contribute to it. But what we found was that there were three implementations that were public. Um, they were all really out of date or didn't work quite how they should work and, and were now not useless in terms of they had no merit, but were not fit for what they were originally purposed for and were not being maintained or updated and there was no real community around it, so there was no benefit to use these. The funny thing is, though, that as an example, in the Ops Meetup yesterday, there, there were at least three companies that are all using Elasticsearch and Logstash and are all doing filters and are all doing tags and formatting and, and all the other things that you need to do. And if you looked at them, they're probably almost exactly the same, but they've all done them by themselves. And, and that's a little bit weird. Um, we've obviously gone and done the exact same thing, so you know, hands up to that as well. But uh, we have put it on our RPC Extras thing, and we'd, we'd love to, to have something where you know, there's, a, there's a single set of like these kind of uh, formats and filters and, and all sorts of other things for Logstash. Um, One of the issues, again, is that uh, the, the devs see the logs differently uh, to, to like ops. And it's a community problem. So the people who are going to fix the problem are the devs, but they really need the ops guys to get involved and say, these are the things we don't like. These are the things we do like. Um, these logs shouldn't be debug mode. These logs should be important. These logs aren't required at all. They should just be removed, um, and, and various other things. And I do want to give a shout out to the OpenStack community for that, because when I first started working on OpenStack in, in 2012, I went to my first conference in San Francisco, and there was an obsession on logging. Um, and the obsession on logging in San Francisco was a little bit different to the obsession yesterday. In San Francisco, there was a room full of ops guys and a handful of devs, and they were essentially hurling words at each other um, that were not quite so friendly. Um, so the, the ops perspective was, this stuff sucks, and all this stuff is terrible, and you guys have done a bad job, and like, this whole thing's rubbish. And the dev response was essentially, well, patch is welcome. Like, you guys can do this stuff yourself, and blah, 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 whatever. Um, which is just, like, this is not healthy conversation, right? And nothing changed in the logging in the following couple months. 
which is pretty much a takeaway from the whole session. When I compare that to yesterday's session, when we had dev, dev people saying, hey, listen, give us, give us examples of what logs you think are not worthwhile. Give us examples of how we can make this better. Like, what would be useful to you? How, how can we make this better for you? Like, we want to help, but you need to tell us what we need to do. Um, and I, I think that that's been very prevalent throughout OpenStack over the years, um, how the, the dev community has adopted um, you know, the requirements from ops and, and tried to, to engage. And I think that at some point, it, it needs to be a 50-50. So the ops guys need to come to the table, and the dev guys are there waiting to help. And, and so that's one of, the, one of the main issues. And even within our own organization, there's resistance to change, right? Like, as a sysad, I know how to do grep. I've looked through logs using grep for you know, years. Like, this is what I do. So you're now telling me to throw that out the window and use this new swanky tool that you've created or you know, implemented. Like, why am I going to do that? Like, I don't know how to use this thing. It seems less efficient. I already know how to use grep. I'll just do that. And so it's hard to get people to start using the tools even when you've built them. Or they think they know the answer to the problem that they have. And so they're telling you what they want and what they think the answer is rather than what they actually need. Um, and, and so that's a couple of, of the issues that we've had. And then another thing is that uh, what tends to happen with ops is that they don't think they can talk to the development team well, or they don't really have a good feedback loop. And so they end up taking whatever the devs have built and just building some stuff on top of it to make it look like how they think it should look. And that's not really an effective way to do it. I mean, a perfect example is the, the kind of filters um, that people have in general to, to remove logs. Like, the correct approach is to go to the dev team and say, hey, these logs aren't needed. Like, let's get rid of them. Or well, these logs are needed, and, and we're not getting them in the right verbosity. So let's like, add those ones in, not to add filters that just hide the fact that the stuff is broken. So that was a pretty uh, just general overview of the, the kind of things that we've done. Uh, my lovely assistant, Jesse, is now going to do the hard part, which is the demo. Uh, so fingers crossed it goes OK. Um, but yeah, he's just going to run through uh, some of the, the tooling that I've, I've talked about and, and just kind of reinforce some of the things that, that I've spoken about, hopefully. I might go and have a drink, though, so I might not be able to see it. <laughs> Howdy. All right. Is uh, stuff visible? Visible enough? So welcome to the world of the log gripper. <laughs> yeah. It, the number of knocks I've walked into um, where this kind of screen is showing up, and there's just lines and lines of text going through. Every now and again, there's a color here and a color there. Those are the smart ones that have figured out how to sort of focus issues. But generally speaking, the knock guys sit there, and, the, and when the lines start to exhibit a pattern of passing much more quickly than usual, then they know something's wrong. <laughs> That's basically the technique. Which is actually just ridiculous. Um, that's, it's not useful information, and it only exhibits actually one kind of problem. The other thing is that logs, um, the, using logs and analyzing logs gives you the capability to spot uh, things that can't really be solved by alerting. Alerting tell you the known, tell you problems within known thresholds and no, known issues that you have. Whereas logs give you the capability to not only dig into issues and, and find um, problems that way, but they also allow you to spot trends. And trends are very key, especially when you're talking about uh, looking at uh, uh, environments at scale. So let me just uh, think about where my next step is. Oh, yes. Not that one. Let me try and go over here. Done. Right, so a couple of things become important. Um, if I step through, like the log grippers world is horrible, and um, that really should die. Um, and so we introduce tooling like Elasticsearch. Uh, Elasticsearch allows you to, to have something that can uh, receive the logs. Um, there are various ways of getting the logs into Elasticsearch, which I won't go into. Um, we're taking a pretty simple, less moving parts um, uh, uh, mechanism, 
which is literally just to ship logs with a decent log shipper that can do multi-line stuff at the source, because that becomes a big problem. And uh, we put it in Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch then does the indexing and makes the stuff available where you can actually search and look at it. And there are wonderful little GUI tools which you can show to your managers, because that's awesome. And uh, they do little things like this, present pictures of your cluster. And my huge cluster of one Elasticsearch server um, is happily behaving itself, and that's wonderful. But it really comes down to the same kind of thing. How do I get my tail in a, in a more manageable way? And uh, for, uh, for the sake of demonstration, because command lines don't do very well in presentations, we like to, do, uh, we like to use something like Cabana, which is, um, provides an interface on top of Elasticsearch to do um, the graphing and the tailing in, uh, in a, a very, easy and very easy manner. So what you're seeing here is um, it's an all-in-one open stack server, but it happens to be containerized, so every service is in a container. So there are a lot of logs going around. We're not, we don't have every single log on the planet coming through, but there are enough logs, as you can see. What, what is this, 1,500 events um, for each bar here. So that's quite a bit of events coming through. But this isn't exactly manageable either. So if I stop it, and I start to think about, okay, what am I actually looking for? Am I looking for something along the lines of um, auth logs? So let's see if I can get this right. Uh, no, that's not going to work. Um, there we go, right. So obviously one of the, the common things you might want to take a look at is, uh, you know, are script kiddies trying to get access into my back end? Are they actually trying to um, figure out what my passwords are and get in? So, Doing this kind of thing is pretty much like a log rebus job. It's just got a nice little bit of makeup on it. This is not very exciting either. And uh, as you can see, there's not a heck of a lot of metadata going on here. And this is all that, like, if you only have some sort of log shipping and you only have Elasticsearch on the back end, this is kind of the, basically all you're doing is dressing up the log rebus job. But at least you're doing it at a bit more scale. And Logstash puts you in a position where you're able to do slightly more funky things. Essentially, you're putting Logstash in the position of doing the log grippers job. So let's find a more interesting log. No, nope. Neutron don't log today. Oh, it's... Let's go back to your long list. I'm sure we'll find one. So there we go. So what you're seeing here is all of a sudden, the log has a lot more metadata. Um, log level, um, the HTTP version uh, given by the client. You're looking at the receive date, request time, request RIP, but more importantly for we're not going to see it here. Um, for, for some sort of metric, something along the line of HTTP time, that's the kind of metadata that, that might be useful. But let me do request uh, ID, I think it is. Yeah. So in your typical troubleshooting process when it comes to something along the lines of um, figuring out what's going on in an event. You can track it by request ID across many logs. And this is where it really becomes useful because now I'm seeing everything, every log and every event that happens to relate to a request ID. So this is not just the load balancer queries that are um, checking whether stuff is still alive. These are actual requests being sent through. And 
if I'm lucky, I will find a request ID that also has, there we go. No, it's not it. There's another one over here. Let me go back. And do this one. Missing it. Let me skip that. But what you'll end up is effectively the log wrapper's job is being done. So your queries become a lot simpler, a lot more accessible to people who don't know the complexities of regex. And, uh, and you have the ability to get access to a different set of logs and a different set of metadata. But then you can go one step further and you can do the really cool thing that everybody loves to do in their offices these days, and you can have a screen on the wall that shows pretty pictures to the managers when they walk past. And the managers love to see things like this, which actually is a very, very simple depiction of what's going on in an environment, but it's also a really good way of being able to spot an unusual trend. Um, so, if I do something like this, and I do a couple of goodies just to create some traffic, what you will spot all of a sudden is the response time goes up. This is an all-in-one server with eight gigs of RAM. Um, it's not a very um, efficient OpenStack environment, but this is the kind of thing that you actually want to see, and you're not necessarily gonna pick up in your alerting infrastructure. You want to see that there's a change in trend. You want to see that all of a sudden, a particular service is executing a lot more queries than it has before. You want to see that perhaps some of your underlying infrastructure is doing something unusual. You want to perhaps see that there are a lot of delete events, and why is that going on? Um, some, of the, some of the dashboards that I've looked at um, have uh, built dashboards around um, you know, what's going on with instances at this moment in time. Uh, other ones have done what, what's going on with the storage at this moment in time. You know, there are different focuses that you can do with little dashboards like this. And this is, this is information that you really can only derive from logs. And this is why you use Kibana instead. Instead of trawling through logs, instead of relying on alerts. Anyway, that's me. Thank you very much. I think we have time for some questions. Um, you can reach out to us on IC or Twitter. Our details are up there um, if, if you need time to. <laughs> but yeah, it's either time for questions or beer. <laughs> uh, can you, would you mind using the mic? It's yeah, so in, okay. I have one question or maybe um, one with a follow-up. Sure. Uh, so one of the things that's um, interesting about logs is um, you know, the information that you get out of them, but one of the things that's painful about logs is um, saying how much information you want. So um, hmm. in the sense that I you know, often don't really care to run my logs at a high logging level, but if I start to hear about problems, I want to be able to tune the log file. So just as difficult as it is to receive logs from lots of different places, it's equally difficult to control logs that are in lots of different places so that I can turn the knob up and say, hey, um, give me a little bit more volume on my Nova compute log. Sure. Um, are you all looking at that particular problem or? Um, yeah, so I'd say that problem is, is handled by the kind of deployment mechanisms that we use. Mm -hmm. So uh, like we can control the verbosity or the, the log level of the individual services um, based on, on how we deploy using Ansible. So it is something that we're looking at. I don't actually think the functionality's in yet. 
um, to, to control it on a per service basis. But it, it's saying that we would definitely handle with, with the Ansible yeah. deployment tools that we're using. And, uh, yeah. So, but okay. um, there's, we are, as a, as a team, as the, the RPC specific team, we're also looking at logging on the same levels that with the log working group. We're taking a look at the problem from many layers. So, as for, for RPC or, or OS Ansible deployment, we're looking at what there is now. And we're trying to work with what there is now. But parts of our team are also looking, looking upstream at the, the OpenStack projects and trying to also solve that problem at a higher layer. Mm -hmm. And then as that evolves, we obviously can evolve the output of the product as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm not sure to have understood the complete picture. So basically you are using, oh, tell me if I'm wrong, um, Logstash as log shipper to, uh, to a central logging uh, thing that after, afterward goes to Elasticsearch and uh, have a nice uh, dashboard with Kibana? Or are you using rsyslog to send logs to a central location that is afterwards uh, processed by uh, Logstash? Sure, so those are actually uh, two separate things really. So we, we have a centralized rsyslog server mostly because of one of the points I mentioned was that um, when support comes to us, they think they know what they want, so they ask for a specific thing. They don't say, we have these issues and can you address them? And one of the things they asked for was a centralized rsyslog server. Um, so that's reasonably simple to implement, so we said, sure, we can do that for you, and we, we implemented it. Um, it. It's not a great solution, and, and we wouldn't advocate using it, um, but, but it's there. And then the, the shipping to Logstash, uh, the shipping using Logstash and then to Elasticsearch is, is kind of separate. So it doesn't take the logs from the centralized rsyslog server. Um, we are actually, I think you just set up the Python Beaver to use uh, log shipping for the logs themselves. Um, so we're using uh, Python Beaver to do uh, kind of multi-line logging, um, for lo using the log shipping to do multi-line logging and various other things, uh, which then sends it to Logstash that has uh, some of the filters, which we were actually able to cut down a bit because of the way we were using the log shipper, and then through to Elasticsearch. Yeah, we're finding that uh, our syslog doesn't behave well when you're talking large scale. Um, for some reason, um, queues build up, and it's queues build up on the sending side and on the receiving side, the, the server just can't keep up when you're talking large clusters. So um, we, within OS Ansible deployment, we provided the capability to do your syslog to whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be an actual syslog server. You could be using Splunk or Logstash or whatever you want. Um, but um, for, for the derivative RPC product, we're, um, we're looking at basically using Beaver, um, not the, uh, not the uh, Logstash shipper. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because we want to be able to handle multi-line at the source, multi-line stack traces, um, MySQL slow logs, rabbit logs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, when you rely on the Logstash server to do that, you can only have one worker and your Logstash server dies. Um, there are other ways to do it. You could be dropping everything in, in Redis and having your Logstash sit on the side and do the processing. Um, we're trying to not have so many moving parts um, and Beaver's really simple to, to configure and it's working really well. Um, but the way that we're doing it there is each, each container, each host in the environment will run the Beaver service. It does the multi-line processing and a, and a few tags right at the source, sends it through via TCP and JSON um, to the Logstash server, and the Logstash server then does a bit more analysis and drops it into Elasticsearch. So the RSS log thing is a different path yeah. so that we have two paths to also store logs. Okay, thank you. Sure. So um, in your ELK uh, stack, what versions have you tried and what works the best? That's question one. And second is, I believe on the, on the Logstash side, you mentioned some of the drawbacks, but from the Elasticsearch and the Kibana 
point of view, have you experienced the drawbacks? Um, so the drawback on the Elasticsearch and Logstash side is really Java. Um, Elasticsearch is reasonably manageable um, because there are plugins that expose a lot of the underlying stuff, so you really can look at it. But Logstash is a bit of a black box, so when it doesn't work, it gets very frustrating. Um, the debug logging is a little over the top. Um, you know, you see every event. And troubleshooting it becomes a, a, a right real pain. But, um, and we've, we've done a bit of research into replacing Logstash with Hecker, for instance, as, a, as an alternative, um, which can do the same job, can, can operate the same way, but has a little more insight into what it's running. For the moment, though, we're, we're sticking with the ELK stack as it is. Um, but, yeah, just even in install time, running a JVM um, and having to maintain the JVM and the memory it uses, that, that, that took a little bit of doing to manage it. But it's, it's working okay now, and it processes quickly enough. The other drawbacks really were around, a, the main issues we've had so far in, for scale is log shipping. It's getting the logs to the Logstash server. The other issue was handling multi-line because you really want those multi-line events as one event. Otherwise, it's pretty much useless. Do you think that Logstash forward is going to do it at all? Logstash can do it, but then you have to implement, uh, when you implement multi-line codecs within Logstash filters, you, um, you have to implement only one worker. It can't, it can't implement multiple workers. So what happens is your log processing grinds to a halt. Um, you just can't funnel the logs through quickly enough. So you can work around that by having multiple log stash instances and then push your logs to those instances, but it, it's a messy way of doing it, and we've taken the approach of rather trying to handle that at the source. It works a lot better. Python Beaver, you'll find that on GitHub. Um, there is another one, which is a fork from the Logstash forwarder um, called Log Courier. It's also written in Go. Um, does all the bits that you would ever want it to do and more, but um, it's not as simple an in installation. You'd have to download it, compile it, produce packages yourself. That is just an overhead that we don't want to handle. So I think uh, we're out of time now. If okay. I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah. if, if you want to come ask questions afterwards, feel free to step up. And uh, we're hiring. I'm obliged to say that. So. <laughs> <laughs>